Here let us discuss about the arterial anastomosis around the scapula. So here the arterial anastomosis around the scapula is principally formed between the branches arising from the first part of the subclavian artery as well as the third part of the axillary artery. So here the overall scapular anastomosis takes place at two different sites. One is around the body of the scapula, second one is around the acromion process of the scapula. So now let us discuss about the arteries which are forming an anastomosis around these particular sites. So here this is the first part of the subclavian artery, first part of the subclavian artery and this first part of the subclavian artery is giving off a branch called as this one is the thyro cervical trunk, thyro cervical trunk. This thyro cervical trunk is giving off totally four branches, one is inferior thyroid artery inferior thyroid artery and next one is ascending cervical artery ascending cervical artery and another one is transverse artery which is called as transverse cervical artery transverse cervical artery this transverse cervical artery is giving off two branches one is the superficial branch of the transverse cervical artery and another one is the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery, right? Superficial branch as well as deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. So, the same thyro cervical trunk is giving off another branch called as supra scapular artery. Supra scapular artery, right? So, as you can see here very clearly, the ascending cervical artery as well as inferior thyroid artery which are the branches of thyro cervical trunk are not taking part in the scapular anastomosis. Only the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery as well as the suprascapular artery are the one taking part in the scapular anastomosis around the body of the scapula. Along with this there is another artery called as circumflex scapular artery, circumflex scapular artery. This circumflex scapular artery is a branch of subscapular artery. This one is called as subscapular artery. And this subscapular artery arising from the third part of the axillary artery. Arising from the third part of the axillary artery. Remember that the third part of the axillary artery totally gives off three branches. One is anterior circumflex humeral artery another one is posterior circumflex humeral artery so the third part of the axillary artery is giving off totally three branches anterior circumflex humeral artery posterior circumflex humeral artery as well as subscapular artery which is giving off a branch called as circumflex scapular artery circumflex scapular artery reaches the body of the scapula at the infraspinous fossa along the lateral border of the scapula and when we talk about the deep part of the transverse cervical artery which runs along the medial border of the scapula and when we talk about the suprascapular artery, the suprascapular artery runs superficial to the suprascapular foramen. When we talk about the suprascapular notch, the suprascapular notch is covered by a suprascapular ligament forming a suprascapular foramen. Through the suprascapular foramen, the suprascapular nerve is the one which passes and above the suprascapular foramen, the suprascapular artery passes down to the infraspinous fossa. This is how the scapular anastomosis is formed around the body of the scapula. And when we talk about the scapular anastomosis along the acromion process of the scapula, it is mainly formed by the acromial arteries from individual branches from the individual arteries. For example, if you see acromion branch this is acromion branch i'll abbreviate as ab acromion branch of the suprascapular artery right and acromion branch of the thoracoacromial artery so this one is called as thoracoacromial thoracoacromial artery and this thoracoacromial artery 
which is arising from the second part of the axillary artery totally gives a four branches one is the acromion branch ab this one is acromion branch like that it gives of deltoid branch it gives of pectoral branch as well as it gives of clavicular branch right clavicular branch pectoral branch deltoid branch as well as acromion branch so acromion branch of the thoracoacromial artery which is arising from the second part of the axillary artery take part in the anastomosis around the acromion process of the scapula and the third artery which is arising from posterior circumflex humeral artery right this is also acromion branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery also take part in the anastomosis around the acromion process so the three acromial arteries which are arising from suprascapular artery thoracoacromial artery posterior circumflex humeral artery take part in the anastomosis around the acromion process of the scapula so this is what is about uh, the anastomosis around the scapular body as well as acromion process and why this particular scapular anastomosis is extremely important for us to know it might have some clinical correlation right for example if the subclavian and axillary arteries were blocked anywhere between the first part of the subclavian artery as well as the third part of the axillary artery actually this scapular anastomosis is the one acts like a god and serves as an important potential pathway where it acts like a predominant collateral circulation between the first part of the subclavian artery as well as the third part of the axillary artery especially to ensure an adequate circulation as well as nutrition to the upper limb that's the reason the scapular anastomosis is extremely important for us to know so by this we completed this topic called as scapular anastomosis